Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are doing another lecture involving the cell cycle. This time, instead of cell cycle mitosis, we're going to be talking about meiosis. The process is a little bit different, but it's got a lot of the same players. So let's jump into the video. So meiosis, what does this mean? We have previously talked about mitosis, which is how the body makes more cells to grow and to repair itself. Meiosis is a different process that's happening here. Okay, so this is a process by which the number of chromosomes in the cell are going to be reduced by half. This results in haploid cells. And I like to remember haploid sounds like half kind of. Right, so if we're reducing the chromosome number by half, that means in human beings, we're gonna take that 46 chromosomes that we have in all of our body cells, and we're gonna reduce that by half, which means that we'll end up with 23 chromosomes in all of the cells made in this process. And just looking at this picture and the picture on the first page, you can see that there's a big difference that's happening here between mitosis and meiosis. So in meiosis, we have two rounds of division, which means that we're starting off with one cell up at the top, and now we're gonna end up with four cells down at the bottom. And in this picture here, it's calling them gametes, which means sex cells. And all of these cells are gonna be haploid, which means that they'll be represented by the letter N, which means 23 chromosomes. Okay, so meiosis is only going to happen to produce gametes. So it's not that it's necessarily happening in gametes, it's producing gametes. So here we're talking about sex cells, we're talking about egg cells, and of course that is for males and females. So here's a major difference. Um, the chart here is going to represent major differences between mitosis and meiosis. That's typically the easiest way to learn the process. So mitosis goes through a one diploid cell breaks into two diploid cells. And of course that's possible because during the S phase of the cell cycle, we're able to double the DNA. And now in meiosis, this other process that we're talking about, we're going to have two rounds of division, but notice we're only going through um, synthesis, the S stage of the cell cycle, one time. So we're going to end up with two different divisions, which means that we're going to have twice as many cells. So now we're going to end up with four cells. So in mitosis, we're creating two cells. Mitosis, I like to think T for two. Mitosis has a T in it. It creates two cells. Okay, these daughter cells are genetically identical to each other, and they are also genetically identical to the original cell that split to make them. This happens in somatic cells, which are body cells. Examples could be your skin cells, liver cells, heart cells, any cells that make up your body. These cells have 46 chromosomes in them, and cytokinesis is going to happen exactly one time. So we will have one division that's actually occurring. One cell splits to become two cells. In meiosis, we're going to have four cells that are being created here that are all genetically different. They're different from each other, slightly different from the parent cell as well. On the types of cells here, we're creating four cells that are all genetically different, and they are called gametes, they are called sex cells, they are called sperm cells and egg cells. These cells all contain 23 chromosomes, they are haploid, and this is possible because the cell cycle of cytokinesis, this process cytokinesis happens two separate times. So first we have one cell that's going to split to become two cells. And then the second division or the second cytokinesis takes place. So those two cells are going to split to become two cells each. And two plus two is four. So we're creating four different cells here that are genetically different and they are all haploid and they are called gametes. This is the new information from this lecture. Okay, so what are homologous chromosomes? We're going to be talking about homologous chromosomes a few times throughout the process of meiosis. So when we refer to homologous chromosomes, this means same chromosomes. So these are chromosomes that are similar in size, they are similar in shape, and they are a similar pair because they contain one set of DNA or one chromosome from mom and one from dad, one from the mother, one from the father. This, um, this information that's carried on them is going to be similar as well. So if it's traits that, you know, um, determine hair color, they're going to be the same, right? The information will be the same, obviously one from mom, one from dad. So the actual allele that you get might be different, but that's okay. It's still quoting for the same information. And of course, like I said, their size and their shape are going to be very similar as well. And we'll look at this when we talk about karyotypes towards the end of this. Okay, so with the diploid cell, we touched on this briefly in the last lecture. So a diploid cell is a cell that has the complete 
set of DNA here. It has two complete sets of homologous pairs. It's a diploid. It is 2N. Okay, so this means that these are our cells that contain 46 chromosomes. Okay, so all of our somatic cells or our body cells are going to be considered diploid cells. These are cells that make up your body, not cells that are going to go on to make up other bodies. Those are your sex cells. They're called sperm cells and egg cells, and they are not diploid. Diploid cells have 46 chromosomes. They are represented as 2N, and they make up all of the parts of your body. A haploid cell, alternatively, has one complete set of chromosomes. And this is called a gamete. It's called a sex cell. It is called a sperm cell or an egg cell. And it's really important that these cells are haploid. Remember, I'm thinking that that sounds like half. They contain half of the genetic information. Because when you have one half plus one half, you get one whole. So if you have a sperm cell and an egg cell that come together during fertilization, 23 and 23, it's going to make 46. That's the first cell that's going to create a new tiny human. So it's really important that these cells are haploid, that they only have 23 chromosomes. Here's a little bit more about that kind of concept here. So we have meiosis produces gametes. It reduces the chromosome number by half. So we start off with 46 chromosomes. We end up with 23 chromosomes, and that means we're making gametes, which are sex cells. So we have an alternating stage of kind of the uh, my um, the diploid versus haploid cells happening here. Okay, so we start off in our bodies with 46 chromosomes in our body cells. And there are certain cells that live in the ovaries and in the testes that are predetermined to become sperm cells and egg cells. So these cells are still body cells, but they're going to go through the process of meiosis. That's the only place that meiosis actually occurs inside of the ovaries and the testes. So they're gonna create egg cells and sperm cells. And those are the gametes that we've been talking about. So these cells here that are going to be in the testes and the ovaries, they're diploid cells, and they're going to go through the process of meiosis. Now, meiosis produces gametes. So they're going to create an ovum, which is an egg, and a sperm cell. And this N, remember, is 23 chromosomes. So we went from having 46 chromosomes in the parent cells now to haploid, right? They're haploid, that they have half the number of chromosomes. But then in fertilization, when a sperm cell and an egg cell come together, they're going to have uh, 23 plus 23 is 46. This is your first diploid cell that's going to be, um, you know, splitting, dividing to create a tiny human being. And then they will go through mitosis hundreds of thousands of trillions of times. And then their bodies will also in the testes and ovaries go through the process of meiosis to create their own gametes. And someday their sperm cells and egg cells will meet another sperm cell or egg cell, and they will have diploid zygotes, which is the first cell to create a tiny human being of their own, right? So it's an alternation that's happening here. So you have diploid cells in your body. Diploid cells start off the process of meiosis. You create haploid cells, and then those haploid cells join together in fertilization to create a new diploid cell, which goes on to create a diploid organism and so on. So this is the alternating stages that occurs with diploid cells and haploid cells. Okay, so each chromosome pairs with the corresponding homologous chromosome, and this is called a tetrad. So when we have two of these homologous chromosomes, we have a tetrad. Okay, so um, we were talking about homologous chromosomes earlier. Remember that it just means same chromosomes. These are same size, same shape. They contain similar information. Okay, so this here is going to be a tetrad. We have one, two, three, four chromatids four chromatids. Tetra means four. So this structure right here is called a tetrad. There are two tetrads in this picture, one here and one here. Okay. Um, this is important for prophase one because we're about to talk about something called crossing over, which is a really significant event in meiosis that occurs during prophase one. All of these little labels. Oops. Okay, so this is the overall process. We know that interphase is happening. Interphase is G1 for growth, S phase for DNA duplication, where we're copying down the DNA, right? And then we have G2, which is a preparation stage and a little bit more growth is occurring. So then we go through two rounds of cellular division. Remember, we said that we make four cells at the end of this. So we have to go through cytokinesis two separate times. So this is gonna be prophase one, and metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, cytokinesis one then those two cells that we just created are going to go into prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, and cytokinesis two. 
that is going to make us our four cells that we are after. Remember that in the process of meiosis, we're creating four cells from one diploid cell goes into the process. It makes four haploid cells that are called gametes. They are called sex cells. They are sperm cells and egg cells. They are haploid which means that they have 23 chromosomes each and they are all genetically different from each other. So this is the process of crossing over that I just mentioned a second ago. So when we have these tetrads that are all meeting up in prophase one of meiosis, so the first time that we're doing prophase, uh, sometimes their little chromatids cross up and then when you're starting to pull them apart, they literally swap little bits of information. So to me, they kind of look like those little um, little trolley gummy worm things that are like half one color and half another color. So the homologous chromosome pairs can exchange genetic information in this process that's called crossing over, where they literally cross over to produce new combinations of alleles. This is why you might have, you know, different traits from your parents. It doesn't necessarily mean that anything nefarious has happened here. It just means that perhaps you had many crossing over events occur when, um, you know, these sperm cells and egg cells are being created. So this increases the genetic variation in a species, and that's really important for the strength of the species. And that's something that we're going to talk about how variation in species is really important when we get to evolution this year. So crossing over is one of the processes that helps to increase genetic variation. It happens during prophase one of meiosis, and it's literally when chromosomes are exchanging genetic information. Okay, so just a comparison picture here between mitosis and meiosis. Remember that in mitosis, we've talked about these little circle diagrams before. We would ordinarily, you know, start off with our 46 chromosomes. Then we're going to go through the S phase. We're going to double that DNA, and then we're going to split that in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, where the cytoplasm pinches off, creating two genetically identical daughter cells. These daughter cells that we're creating here are identical to each other, but also to the original. So this is considered asexual reproduction because we are creating copies here. We're creating copies of the original cell. We have two different copies of them. So they are identical to each other and to the original. In meiosis, we start off with a diploid cell that's going to go through G1S where it's doubling DNA. It's going to go through G2, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, cytokinesis 1. It's going to split. And then after cytokinesis 1, it's going to go through prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, and cytokinesis 2, and they're going to split again. Remember here that we have a diploid cell, and we're going to end up with four haploid cells that are all genetically, um, genetically unique or genetically different from each other. And lastly, we just want to look at this picture called a karyotype. So we've been talking about homologous chromosomes, and we've been talking about how they are similar sizes and shapes, okay? So when we put the chromosomes together, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes for 46 total. You got one from mom, one from dad, okay? So when you look at all of these paired up, you can see that they're the same size, the same shape, and they're going to code for similar information. Okay, this deals with those homologous chromosomes that we've been talking about. Okay, so we arrange them on a karyotype from the largest to the smallest with the sex chromosomes coming at the very end. So here you can see number one is going to be the largest, number 22 is going to be the smallest, and these are the autosomes. These are going to be chromosomes that make up uh, your body um, characteristics that don't have to do with um, sex sex identification, right? So sex chromosomes are either XX for female or XY for male. XX are the same, so they're going to be the same size, same shape. XY are obviously two different chromosomes, so we're going to have a larger X and a smaller Y here. The Y chromosome just contains less information, okay? So this is what a karyotype looks like, and you would have either XX or XY, okay? So we're going to look at what a real one actually looks like, like this. Okay, so you can see we have the largest at number one, the smallest at 22. We have two on each one of these numbers. There's two at position one, two at position two, two at position three. So this is a normal human. Okay, and then down here at the bottom, we have two chromosomes that are in the X position and nothing in the Y position. That means this individual is XX, which means that they are a female. This picture... We have two chromosomes at each position, okay? This means that they are a normal human being. 
And then here we have an X and we have a Y. So this is a normal male. Now, if you had an extra chromosome at one of these positions, let's say position number one, if you had a third, that would be a trisomy. Tri means three, right? So this is dealing with three chromosomes in the first position. So this would be called a trisomy one. Or if it was at position two, a trisomy two. Um, if you're lacking a chromosome, okay, so if one of these was missing, that would be a monosomy. Mono means one. So one chromosome at this position. So you can have a monosomy one, monosomy two. Okay, these are just different um, genetic abnormalities that can occur occasionally. Okay, so that's a little bit about meiosis and a comparison to mitosis. Again, it's just a very brief overview. This is just very basic, basic level freshman biology. Um, in a more normal year, we would delve a little bit deeper. But um, this is the overview for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.